Welcome to Sydney, Australia's oldest and largest city. You're watching World Travel Guide, this time we will visit Down Under and show you the most fascinating sights of Sydney. Sydney is the largest and most populous city in Australia and the state capital of New South Wales. Sydney is located on Australia's southeast coast of the Tasman Sea. The city is built around a huge harbour and hosts many tourist attractions as well as a number of beaches, bays, and a couple of national parks. Sydney is divided into north and south by the Sydney Harbour, with both Sydney Harbour Bridge and Tunnel connecting them. Most of the tourist attractions are in the south part of the city, with a large business and residential area in the north. Sydney and its surrounds contain around 20% of the entire population of Australia, at about 4.6 million people. The modern history of Sydney began with the arrival of a first fleet of British ships in 1788 and the foundation of a penal colony by Great Britain. The city is named after Lord Sydney, who was British Home Secretary when Captain Arthur Phillip and the first fleet arrived in the harbour. The colony's early years were harsh. After four governors and a military revolt, known as the Rum Rebellion, Governor Lachlan Macquarie was put in charge. He restored order and charted a new course for New South Wales, Australia's first state, as a free society. Macquarie was a great builder and visionary. Rivers and lakes, a bank, a university, even a dictionary are named after him. By the 1830s, Sydney was a busy commercial seaport exporting wool to Europe. Transportation of convicts from Britain ended in 1840, and the gold fever struck in the 1850s. By 1911, Sydney had become Australia's largest city, and after World War II it benefited from a shift in Australia's trade toward North America and Asia, and away from Britain. In the late 20th century, Sydney has become the most international and most sophisticated of Australian cities. The most striking example of this was its role as host of the 2000 Summer Olympics. Immigration has transformed Sydney into one of the world's most ethnically diverse cities. More than 180 nationalities call it home. You'll discover more of Sydney's past at museums and on heritage and cultural tours and at the State Library of New South Wales on Macquarie Street. The Sydney Harbour Bridge is one of the world's most recognisable landmarks. Not only is it the largest steel arch bridge on the planet, but it also spans one of the globe's finest natural harbours. Affectionately named the Coat Hanger by locals, it's an intrinsic part of Sydney. You can walk or cycle across it, and even climb to its peak for incredible views. The iconic bridge took eight years to build and opened in 1932. It's made of 53,000 tons of steel and 6 million hand-driven rivets. The Sydney Opera House was opened in 1973. It is more than just an architectural marvel set on beautiful Sydney Harbour, it's also a world-class working opera house. It hosts everything from classical ballet performances, innovative theatre and symphony music to contemporary dance and stunning opera productions. This UNESCO World Heritage listed building offers daily guided tours, available in all major world languages. You can enjoy a behind-the-scenes peek as you lift the curtains and uncover the fascinating stories of Australia's most celebrated performing arts centre. The Rocks is the birthplace of modern Sydney. With the arrival of European settlers in 1788, it was here that the convicts first set up house and shop. You can discover the area's rich colonial history, as well as its contemporary position as a thriving entertainment precinct right by the spectacular Sydney Harbour. The best way to discover the rocks is on foot, as you amble along cobbled streets and follow little laneways that house everything from markets to museums and galleries. You can also hire bicycles and pedal around the harbour foreshore.
Named after Hyde Park in London, Sydney's Hyde Park is Australia's oldest park. It's a peaceful sanctuary in the heart of the city and a lovely spot for a picnic. Sprawling lawns, shady picnic spots, flowers, fountains, and fig trees provide a welcome escape, and the park offers prime people watching, especially at lunch when city workers come here to kick off their shoes. Facing Hyde Park, the St. Mary's Cathedral is a symbol of the spiritual beginnings of the Catholic Church in Australia. This striking landmark in neo-Gothic style is the seat of the Archbishop of Sydney. Topped by twin spires, the building was modeled on Lincoln Cathedral and its imposing facade reflects the design of Notre Dame in Paris. Inside the cathedral, intricate stained glass windows cast beautiful patterns of light. Sydney isn't the only global city with a Chinatown, but this one is bigger, better and boasts more than most, thanks to the Chinese immigrants that started arriving in the 1800s. You can find everything here, from small specialist stores and sprawling Asian grocers to noodle bars in hidden food halls and tucked away fine dining restaurants. Not to mention lively markets and late night karaoke. The pedestrian thoroughfare of Dixon Street is the beating heart of Chinatown, and it really comes alive during the spectacular Lunar New Year celebrations for the traditional Chinese calendar. Celebrations go on for weeks and everyone is welcome. Bondi Beach is an iconic stretch of fine sand and curling waves, and one of the world's most famous beach destinations. The beach is flanked by sandstone headlands, which are popular for walking, golfing, and whale watching. You can enjoy Bondi at any time of the year. Bondi Beach is 30 minutes from Town Hall Station by train and bus, and offers visitors insights into Australia's easygoing beach culture. Even complete novices can learn to surf here, at one of the accredited surf schools. The months of October, November, late February and March are the best time to visit Sydney as they generally offer sunny weather, while avoiding the heat of midsummer and the school holiday crowds. The weather is ideal for sightseeing, outdoor activities and water sports, and hotel rates are also lower. December to early February is the high season. During this time, the weather is always hot, and many tourists head to the beaches and various sporting events at this time. Rates for hotels are always higher, even more so around Christmas and New Year, when schools are shut and many offices and businesses also close. What is your favorite place in Sydney? Let us know in the comments. If you love this video, hit the like button and subscribe. You should also check out other fascinating travel destinations on our channel.